When I talk about shared responsibility, it's because I genuinely believe that in a time when many folks are struggling, uh, in a time when we have enormous deficits, uh, it's hard for me to ask seniors on a fixed income or young people with student loans or middle class families who can barely pay the bills to shoulder the burden alone. And I think to myself, if I'm willing to give something up as somebody who's been extraordinarily blessed and give up some of the tax breaks that I enjoy, I actually think that's going to make economic sense. But for me as a Christian, it also coincides with Jesus' teaching that for unto whom much is given, much shall be required. Just this morning at the National Prayer Breakfast, the President took what has always been a nonpartisan opportunity for national unity and used it to promote his political agenda. He suggested to the attendees that Jesus would have supported his latest tax the rich schemes. With due respect to the President, he ought to stick to uh, public policy. I think most Americans would agree that the Gospels are concerned with weightier matters than effective tax rates. As long as the president has decided to assume the role of theologian-in-chief, he would do well to put tax policy aside and consider the impact of one of his latest Obamacare, Obamacare mandates. Secretary, Secretary Sebelius' decision to force religious institutions over the strong objections of churches and universities representing millions and millions of Americans to provide insurance coverage for abortifacient drugs and contraceptives to their employees will require these groups to violate their deepest held religious beliefs. The President's comments this morning share more with political strategy than they do <coughs> the religious beliefs of most Americans. In 2008, the President declared that his nomination was the world historical moment when the rise of the oceans began to slow and our planet began to, began to heal. Someone needs to remind the President that there was only one person who walked on water, and he did not occupy the Oval Office.